yes, settle down onto your backs and yeah, just take a moment to arrive. You're right there, Jan. I've muted you so I can't. Press your space bar if you've got, if you need to speak. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Now, yeah. Just wanted to say, I don't think you're going to see me lying down. I can't shift this because I, my iPad's charging and I can't move the thing. Don't worry, don't worry. it's fine. I don't need to see you because we're doing yeah. quite familiar things lying down. So, Sorry about that. That's all right, don't worry. So, yes. We're starting lying down, shall I? So, just, yeah, lie, lie on your back. So, the first thing we're going to do is, Aditi, is that you? I can see your legs there. <laughs> so, hello, hi. So yes, yeah, starting lying down on your backs and just a little, you know, a couple of moments. Oh, Nigel's joining in his own space. So just, yeah, a couple of moments of arriving on your back and seeing how you feel. So if you're anything like me, I was feeling incredibly creaky this morning. It might have been, um, yeah, couch to 5K with my children. It might have been the the effects of that but however you're feeling it's just that sort of settling arriving just checking in with your body and if there are any places that feel a bit tight or creaky then just making sure you go easy there so the first thing I'd like you to do lying down is to feel the weight of your head on the floor let the shot your shoulders settle onto the ground and then just letting your head roll to the right and to the left. So easing your head from side to side. And as you let your head roll to the right and to the left, you're not trying to go as far as you can. You're doing a comfortable, easy movement. So all of the things that we're doing lying down on our back at the beginning are not things you should push yourself in. They're things where we're releasing tension and we're just trying to make it easy for ourselves. And so from rolling your head, then find a comfortable place where you can settle the back of your head on the floor. And if your legs are long, you're going to bend your knees and stand your feet on the floor. And have your knees you know, roughly a hip width apart. And then you're going to start to let your knees rock to the right and to the left and see how this feels. And again, you can make the movement as small or as large as you like. So you want it to feel comfortable in your body. And this movement is really helpful for feeling how does you know, how do you feel into your hip joints? How do you feel around the back of your pelvis? How does your lower back feel today? So a few more times, letting your knees rock to the right and to the left. And then we're going to expand on this rocking movement a little bit. What I'd like you to do is keep your knees, your legs as they are, just pause in the middle for a moment and cross your arms over your chest. So it's like you're giving yourself a hug. And again, if you're not sure, look at me. So you've got your elbows crossed over your chest. And now, can you start to rock from side to side so that your knees, your elbows and your head are all rocking to one side and then rocking to the other? So now it's more a feeling that you're rocking side to side across the back of your body. And again, it's up to you. It could be a large movement where you feel that you're really rocking towards the side of your body, which I can see some of you doing, and that's, that's great. Or it could be a smaller movement where you're rocking more just across your back, sort of to the right and to the left across your back. Now, in a moment, you're going to rock all the way over onto one side and you're going to have a couple of breaths there. So what I would suggest is bring your bottom arm so it's resting under the side of your head and your top arm can. That's it. Are we all right? So rocking all the way, all the way onto one side with. Yeah, that's that's it. 
So your bottom arm could come to rest under your head. Your top arm could be however is comfortable. When you come onto your side, bend your knees a bit more, Aditi. So then your knees are at a right angle to your body. So you're, that's it. Good. You've got your bottom arm under your head. Just have a couple of breaths lying on your side. Try to make yourself as comfortable as possible. And then what I'd like you to do here, so most of you know this little movement, you're going to feel the ribs that are on the floor, the side of your body that's on the floor. And then can you lift those ribs off the floor? So it's like you're making a little tunnel under the side of your body. Can you lift your bottom ribs off the floor? Just the ribs, so it's not a huge movement. So you imagine you're making a little tunnel under the side of your body. You lift those bottom ribs off the floor and then you place them back down again. And you do this a few times. So imagine you're making this little tunnel, this little archway under the side of your body, but the pelvis and the shoulder still stay in contact with the ground. It's just your ribs that lift away from the floor. So obviously this little movement, I don't think I can, yes, that's good, Maria, I can see your back. So I can see, <laughs> so, can't, yeah, that's it, I can see something happening there. Okay, from here, rock back onto your back again and do a little bit more of that rocking you did. So with your arms crossed over your chest, with your knees bent and your feet standing on the floor, do a bit more rocking from side to side. So letting your knees, your elbows and your head all rock towards the right and then towards the left. So you feel that you're rolling side to side across the back of your body. That's it, Sheila, across your arms over your chest. Good. Good. And then can you use this rocking movement to rock yourself all the way onto your other side? Yeah, so can you, that's it, rock all the way onto your other side. And come to lie on your side, just as we were a moment ago, putting your bottom arm on, under your head, just making that comfortable. Hopefully you're on side two now. Yeah, good. Bring your knees up a little bit so they're at a right angle to your body. Your feet can come a little bit further forwards on the floor. So you want to think there's these right angles um, behind the knees and in the front of your hip joints. Good. And then again, you can do that little movement where you're making a tunnel under the side of your body by lifting your ribs off the floor. And just do that a few times on this side. So lift your bottom ribs off the floor, place them back down again. So it's a small movement. You imagine you're making a little tunnel under the side of your body. When your ribs are lifted up, it, your hand could slide underneath them. You don't have to try that, but you could always try sliding your top hand underneath them. And then from here, roll back onto your back. And this time, just let your arms come to rest on the floor, but have your knees bent and your feet standing on the floor. And come back to letting your knees tilt to the right and to the left. That's nice. Good. So do this a couple more times. Knees tilting to the right and to the left. Keep it comfortable. Keep it easy. And then pause in the middle and take your feet a bit wider apart. So your feet are as wide as your mat. This is the narrow edge of your mat, not the, the whole length of your mat. So take your feet as wide as your mat and then come back to tilting your knees. So taking your knees over to the right and over to the left, that's it. And see how this feels. And make sure you're taking both knees with you. Sometimes the knee that's going to the outside, sometimes we don't go as far with that knee as we could do. That's it, Sheila, good. So think about both knees coming to each side. Now, if this is comfortable, you could take your knees all the way over towards one side and stay there for a couple of breaths. So let your knees come over towards the side. Let your head roll in the opposite direction. So that your shoulder, so the shoulder that your knees are turned away from, that shoulder stays settled and heavy on the floor. 
So if your head rolls towards that shoulder, it will help the shoulder settle down. And have a couple of breaths, just giving the weight of your legs down towards the ground. If you feel that one of your knees is hovering a bit and you have a cushion to hand, so Sheila, you can always slide a cushion under that top knee, the knee that's coming to the centre or the bottom knee. Yeah, either of the knees. Good. And in your own time, you can do this going to the other side. So you might want to come back to the centre. Let your knees tilt in each direction a couple more times. So do a little bit more rocking. And then let your knees come all the way down to the other side. That's it, yes. And again, if you have a cushion to hand and you want to slide it under either of your knees, you can do. But, you know, don't worry if you don't have a cushion to hand. I just know that <laughs> I can see cushions in some of your some of your spaces. So let a breath come in. Let a breath leave you. Give the weight of your legs down to the floor. Perhaps another couple of cycles of breath. Feel the breath come in. Feel the breath leave you. And then from here, come back into the centre and now fold both knees into your chest and hold around, that's it, hold around the top of your knees or around the back of your thighs. You can do a little bit of rocking from side to side here. And the other thing I'd like you to do here is take your legs up to the ceiling and give them a shake out. And you can add your arms in as well if you like. Good. Okay. And then from here, you can come down and lengthen your legs out on the floor. See how it feels to lie long. Because in a moment, we're going to roll onto our side, but we're going to be long on our side. So we're going to be doing anantasana, which some of you know, this is this side balance. So it might well be if you have, you don't know what on earth I'm talking about, that you when you roll onto your side, you organize yourself so you can see me. That seems to have gone incredibly dark in my room. Um, yes, so we're going to be lengthening ourselves out on our side like this. So our body is in a long straight line as much as possible. I like to have my head propped up in my hand. You could have your head resting down like this. Yeah, that doesn't matter too much. And this top hand can be on the floor in front of you to start with. So come into this position, just come and organize yourself in this position on your side. And what I'm doing, first of all, is a little bit of rocking forwards and back, just to try and settle myself here. Because as I said, it is a balance. And sometimes the side of our body can feel, feel quite lumpy and bumpy. So this hand can be on the floor in front of you as you're settling. You want to feel that you're stretching your heels away from you and you're trying to feel the side of your body on the floor. And then from here, we bring our top leg into a tree pose. And it might be that you need to catch your ankle if you want to, to bring your foot a bit higher up your thigh. And again, you just see, can you balance here? Can this hand come off the floor? We're breathing, we're settling down through the side of the body. And then from here, what about bringing this knee towards our armpit, in the top side of our body? Can we still stay balanced? If you're feeling very wobbly, you could then bend the bottom knee and slide it forwards on the floor or keep that leg long. Now from here, we're then going to lengthen this leg up towards the ceiling and you want to catch hold of your leg somehow with your hand. It might be your big toe, it might be your ankle, it might be round the back of your leg. So you're helping to support that leg with your, your arm. And you're trying to, very nice, good. You're trying to stay as steady as possible, breathing, settling through the side of your body. Good. And then as with all balances, we try to make a decision, a conscious decision to come out rather than fall out. So we can bend the knee, we can come back down through tree pose, we can lengthen this leg out, we can end up, can we end up long on our side with our arm along the top side of our body? 
And then from here, you're going to roll onto your belly and just have a couple of quiet breaths on your belly. And on your belly, you can give your pelvis um, a little bit of a wiggle. So, yeah, just on your belly, give your pelvis a wiggle. Let the breath come in, let the breath leave you. And then we will be rolling over onto side two and doing all of that on side two. So you, you can either, you don't necessarily need to be able to see me because you know what we're doing, you're doing. We're doing the whole, whole Anantasana again. So come and lengthen yourself out on your second side. Decide what you're going to do with your head and your arm. So it might be that that arm is long. It might be you prop your head up in your hand. We've got our hand on the floor in front of us. We do a little bit of rocking forwards and back. Just trying to settle ourselves on the floor. Feeling long, good. And then from here, the top foot can come towards tree pose on our side. And again, you might need to use your hand if you want to bring your foot right up onto the top of your thigh, you don't have to. So this is my more wobbly side. So I'm already feeling a little bit of trepidation about what's going to happen when I come to here, folding the knee towards the armpit, that's it. And so again, remember, if you feel really wobbly at this point, you can bend this bottom knee and that will make it a little bit more stable. Otherwise, we'll, we'll soldier on with that bottom leg straight. And what happens when we lengthen out the top leg? Where can we catch this leg? How can we hold on to our leg? Can we settle? Can we settle? Can we breathe? So in this, in this side balancing position. And so I always often think about this when you, in, if you're in Thailand, often, often sort of, I think the sculptures of the Buddha are often in this sort of, maybe not with the leg up in the air, this sort of position, and they're very restful. So we can start to move back down. So we are thinking about trying to be restful here through the side of our body. So back to here, back to here, back to lengthening out the top leg, bringing your arm along the top side of your body. And then once more from here, you're going to roll onto your belly and just, yeah, again, a couple of quiet breaths on your belly. Give your pelvis a wiggle. <sighs> let the breath come in, let the breath leave you. Now, if you like being on your belly, have another couple of breaths there. From our belly, we're going into child pose. So it's really, at this point, it's your choice whether you prefer to be on your belly. So Linda, with your knee issue, you're probably better on your belly for the moment. Um, um, so from your belly, if you prefer, you can fold into child pose for a couple more breaths. And rest your elbows on the ground, just settle in child pose. Good, let the breath come in, let the breath leave you. See people being reasonably happy on their bellies. Good. I just from here, when I'd like you to come and just have a little lengthen out in a dog pose, and then we're going to think a bit in a bit more detail about our dog pose. But I think from here, let's just see without too much thought and preparation, how does it feel to come into dog pose? So from your belly and from child pose, come onto hands and knees. Big handprints on the floor, tuck your toes under, exhale, pick your knees up off the floor, come into your dog pose. You could be doing a little bit of walking on the spot, bending one knee at a time and just, how does dog pose feel right now? Good, very nice. Very nice. So just a little bit of lengthen out and then we're, we're going to think about some of the different elements of dog pose. So when you come down from this dog pose, I'd like you to come and sit in cobbler pose and lean back onto your hands. So cobbler pose is really helpful, I always find, and, and pinwheel, which we will do in a moment, for releasing sort of tightness around the pelvis. 
So from here, that's it. So from leaning back here, what we're going to do is take one knee on top of the other knee. That's it. And then slide this top leg back. With that, that's it. And then can we circle a little bit here? Now, I want to show you, I want to show you a hand move. So I'm going to move up close to the camera. We're going to do a little sequence of hand movements. So is everyone all right to sit up in their pinwheels? So Shala, have you, from here, Shala, have you um, slide this top leg back? That's it. So be in, that's it, be in this position. Is that okay? Good, because if everyone can release their hands, is that all right, Nigel? You're going to bring your hands into prayer pose. Okay, spread the fingers out. And then can you keep your knuckle, underside of your knuckles touching, but stretch your three middle fingers away? But look, I'm not opening my hands out. I'm just stretching the three middle fingers away from each other. Then you can open your hands out into this lotus mudra. So you really stretch into your fingers. Then curl the fingers in towards each other. Bring the backs of the hands to touch. Yeah, good. Just give the fingers a bit of a wiggle. Okay. Let's try that once. Um, we'll try that on the other side of pinwheels. So just let your arms go. Um, lean back onto your arms now. Slide your top leg back here. Open your legs out in cobbler pose. Just here, can you come to a little bit of rocking in cobbler pose? Yes, yeah, so you could hold your feet. You could lean back onto your arms. Just a little bit of rocking from side to side. So it does, really doesn't matter where you're holding, whatever is most comfortable. Okay, and then let's do this one again. So let's go the other way. So the other knee comes on top, that's it. And then slide that top leg back. So we're in our other side of pinwheel. And then can we do the hand thing again? So stay where you are and I'll just move a little bit nearer. So is it possible on this side? So the hands are gonna to touch. We're gonna to really stretch into the fingers. And then you bring the three middle fingers apart, but you're trying to keep the palms touching on the side of the knuckles. Then you stretch the hands into this lotus flower. So you really stretch into your fingers. Stretch, stretch, stretch. And then you bring the fingers back together. Backs of the hands together. Backs of the wrists touching, drop the elbows. Good, wiggle the fingers. So what we're going to do now is come into another dog pose in a moment. You can give your hands a shake out, where we're really focusing on our hands. So it might be from here, you can just lean back onto your arms, lengthen your legs out. So that's going to be our focus in our first dog pose is, well, second dog pose maybe, first in this little series, is really thinking about our hands. So from stretching the hands out, come and place your hands on the floor. Have your hands quite wide apart and really, really big hands on the floor. So in this dog pose, that's where our focus is going to be. So tucking your toes under, exhaling, rocking your hips back over your heels, picking your knees up off the floor. And then when you're in dog pose, of course, you can bend your knees, you can walk on the spot. But all the time, I want you to feel your hands on the floor, that you've got these really big, big hands on the floor. <sighs> Let your head go. We'll think about the head a bit more in a moment, good. So big, big hands on the floor. Whenever you need to come out of dog pose, do so. Good. And when you come down out of dog pose, if it's possible um, to come into kneeling, sit down in kneeling for a moment. Nigel, you could be up in kneeling and just give your hands a shake out. Now, we're going to come back into dog pose and this time we're really thinking about feet. So if it's possible for you to, have your, to, to not have socks on, that would be quite good. And in your dog, we're going to be coming up onto the ball of the feet and then rolling onto the tops of the toes one at a time. So yeah, so again, think about your big hands still. So big handprints on the floor, 
hands quite wide apart, tucking your toes under, rocking your hips back over your heels. And then, yes, working into your feet. So maybe bending one knee at a time. So you come up onto the balls of your feet. That's it, good. So when you've bent one knee and you've come onto the, right onto the ball of your foot, then roll through the tips of your toes onto the top of your toes, just one foot at a time. Okay, it'd be really unpleasant if you try and do to both feet. That's good, very nice. Very nice, so rolling, that's it. Good, very nice. So when you've done this several times through each foot, then just settle back into dog pose for a couple of breaths. And your knees can be as bent as you like. And yeah, a couple of breaths. And then obviously come back down when you need to. Now, just before we go, we've got one more dog pose we're going to do. Before we do that, either in kneeling, Nigel, again, you can be up here. If you're down in kneeling, but I need just see if you can lean back a little bit. And, and Nigel, I don't know whether you, you could be at the sofa and your fingertips could be here. So kneeling, can you just, that's it, let yourself go back a little bit. So you open out through the front of the hip joints and the thighs. Now, we're gonna go into one more dog pose. This time you're thinking about your head. And what you're going to do is you're gonna look back behind you and you're gonna look forwards along your mat. So you're going to take your head in two directions and then you're going to try and just let your head hang. Okay. So last dog pose, your, I don't think it's your last dog pose, last dog pose for the moment, your focus is your head and where are you looking, your gaze. So tuck your toes under, exhale, rock your hips up and back into dog. And maybe to start with, just notice where are you looking in dog? And then I want you to play around with looking. So in your dog pose, looking, looking right back behind you. You can even be looking at your belly. And then what's it like to look forwards along your mat? So make sure when you're doing these things, you're not obviously not hurting your neck. But yeah, what's it like to look back and to look forwards? And then from doing those things, can you just let your head hang? and be heavy and do nothing, good, that's it. And again, bend your knees as much as you like. But yeah, in a way it's this, can you sort of move your head in two directions and then can you just let your head go? Because <sighs> in dog pose actually, you know, if we can let our head hang off the end of our spine, it's really, really good for the spine. It's really, really good for the neck in particular. Good. Okay, and then from this dog, Come back down, maybe have a couple of breaths in child pose. Child pose or kneeling or lying on your belly um, in the, if you're better on your belly than child pose. So just ah, let yourself settle down, particularly think in your child pose or in kneeling or on your belly about your shoulders. So can your shoulders be really relaxed? So maybe in child pose, you need to take your elbows a bit wider apart. Are your elbows rest, that's it, Sheila, good. Are your elbows resting on the floor? Are your shoulders as relaxed as they could be? Do you feel wide across your upper back? <sighs> yes, you need big exhalation. So as, as I'm sure we all know, the shoulders are somewhere, it's so easy to hold tension. Okay, just give yourself a couple more breaths in whatever position you're in now. Child pose, lying on your belly, kneeling. And we're going to come on into a couple of lunge variations to open out through the front of our body after all the, all the dog pose. So, from hands and knees, step one foot forwards between your hands. So I also step my, also step my foot forwards between my hands. Then I've tucked my toe under and walked my back leg away, keeping my front knee over my front heel. 
what I would like you to do today in lunge is then walk your front foot out to the side so both hands come onto the inside of that front leg. Yeah. And then from here, if you like, you don't have to do this next bit, but if you like, leaning down into your hands, can you pick your back knee up off the floor? So you have to obviously tuck your back toe under to do that. So it's quite a big stretch through this back leg thigh, really stretching into your heel, lean down into your arms. Good. And whenever you like, you can let that back knee come down onto the floor. You could untuck your back toe. You could walk your front foot back between your hands and you could ease out of your lunge. You could ease back a bit like this one. Then you lean back. And you could come forwards again as well. You could ease into it again, back into lunge if you like. And then we'll swap sides of lunge. So if you want to swap sides, uh, swap sides in lunge going into dog, you could do, or you could just swap sides in lunge on hands and knees. So we come into side two of lunge tucking your toes under in your back leg, front knee over your front heel, and then walk your front leg out to the side so that your hands can both be on the inside, that's it, of that front leg. And then you can stretch into your back heel, tuck your toes under, let that back knee come off the ground. Lean down into your arms. Good. So we're in this long lunge, we don't have to stay here forever, with the back knee off the floor, leaning down into our, our arms. And then let the back knee come down. You could untuck the back toe, you can walk your front foot back between your hands, and then you can ease back out of lunge. So keep your chest close to your thigh, look back behind you. And you can ease back into lunge again. Just a sort of normal lunge with your foot in between your hands. <sighs> now, from lunge, we're going to come on into plank pose because the arms are very similar. When we're leaning down into our arms in that lunge, it's actually very similar to our plank pose arms. So, come onto hands and knees towards the front of your mat. And from here, we're trying to keep our pelvis where it is. We're going to lengthen one leg back, add the other leg in. So we're coming into our long straight line of plank. So you're really stretching your heels away from you and you're looking down at the floor, just sort of in front of your fingertips. And we're trying to breathe here <laughs> and feel long. <sighs> Breath or two. Good, you can come down for a moment. We're going to do another lunge. Give your hands a shake out, maybe bring the backs of your hands together. We're going to do another lunge. This time from that lunge, we'll come into dog pose and we'll walk our hands into our feet into a forward bend. So maybe if I just show you. So from here, we'll come to here and we'll come to here. Um, not quite as quickly as that, but just so you know where we're going. So again, front of your mats, coming back. So you shoulders over the wrists, lengthen one leg back, add the other leg in, into your plank pose, trying to feel this long straight line from your shoulders to your hips to your heels. And then here as you let a, as you exhale, you can send your bottom up into dog pose. And it probably feels quite a long dog, so you could then walk your feet in a little bit, so the dog pose isn't quite so long. And then from there, you're going to walk your hands in towards your feet. So you end up with all of your weight in your feet, and you're in a forward bend. And at this point, yeah, it's good to check that you can take your hands off the floor, let your head go. If your lower back needs some support, bend your knees, rest your elbows on your thighs. Now from here, we're going to roll up into standing or walk your hands up your thighs. So we're, yes, arriving up in standing. And it might be time to have a drink of water. 
I think I was still in the heat wave mode where I kept feeling I had to tell everyone to have a drink of water every, every five minutes. But good. So we're going to we're going to do some balances today. We're, we're going to just do one, and then we're going to do something else and come back to a few more. We're going to do some balances with some hand positions. Some of you will be familiar with this one. I'm, I'm just going to show you to start with. So in this one, we're going to shift our weight onto the right foot. The left foot will come back ar around the back of the right shin. We'll bring the right palm up and the left palm down and both palms face forwards, okay? So it's quite a, so it's quite a sort of meditative balance. So come down, have a little shake out and we'll do it together now. So starting with your feet hip width apart and parallel, you're gonna shift your weight over onto your right foot. And then your left foot is gonna come around the back of your right ankle or, or calf. So you're wrapping your foot around the back of the, the left foot around the back of the right calf. And then your right hand is coming up and facing forwards. And your left hand is down and facing forwards. And we're just seeing how it feels to settle here. And it's fine. Remember that all of these standing balances are a process. And we're going to feel wobbly at times. And sometimes those wobbles will make us fall over. And that's fine. We just come out, come back in, good. Let's see how it is to settle here. Now, some of you have done this balance with me before, and these, our hands in this represent two different qualities. The right hand, the top hand is fearlessness, and the bottom hand is forgiveness. So I think we're probably just about ready to come down and do the other side. So when we practice with these what with mudras, these hand positions, they, they just perhaps give us an, an extra quality in the balance, which might help us feel more steady, or it might just give us a bit more focus. So start bringing your weight onto your left foot. So the right foot is going to come round the back of the left ankle, the calf. This time the left hand comes up and faces forwards. The right hand is down, also the palms facing forwards. And you're trying to let your shoulders be as soft and relaxed as possible. And just seeing how does it feel to settle on your left foot? So it can feel quite different one foot to the other. Again, have this focus of feeling the centers of your palms facing forwards. Keeping the centers of your palms soft. Seeing if you can feel your breath. Are you breathing? So again, like me, if you have a little wobble, can you sort of withstand that wobble? Can you settle back down? Another breath or two, and then yes, come down, have a little shake out. So that, that balance was just maybe to give us a little idea of how we're balancing today. We're actually going to come into a, a sequence now that takes us down towards face up dog and then we'll come back to a couple more balances. So come towards the back of your mat and feet hip width apart and parallel, hands in prayer pose. So a bit like sun salute, we're going to um, Start and finish at the back of our mats, with some sort of be at the front, obviously. So from here, let a breath come in. As you exhale, you're going to take your arms down and then up. At this point here, when you take your arms up, drop your shoulders down, and then roll down into a forward bend. Okay, so you're taking your arms and your head down towards the floor. And then from here, we're going to walk our hands forwards into dog pose. So big hand prints, walking our hands forwards on the floor until we reach a dog pose that feels comfortable for us. Don't worry if your heels come up, that's fine. Breath or two in dog. And then bring your knees down onto the floor so you're on hands and knees. And just check at this point, your hands are under your shoulders, your knees are under your hips. We're going to do some cat movements. You're going to be rounding your back and dipping your spine. 
So see how these movements feel here. Round your back to the ceiling. Dip your spine down to the floor. So when you round your back to the ceiling, let your head hang. Look back towards your feet. When you dip your spine down to the floor, you can look forwards along your back. And a couple more times, rounding and dipping. Making sure you're breathing. Doesn't matter how you're breathing, just make sure you're not holding your breath. A couple more times, round your back to the ceiling, let your head go. Dip your spine down to the floor, let your belly soften. The next time you round your back to the ceiling, now, um, Linda, you may want to miss this out because we're going to go back into child pose, but just briefly. So you might actually, you might just want to come up to here and take the weight. I don't know if that's worse for your knees. Um, <laughs> yeah, so if child pose is okay for you, come into child or you could be in kneeling just to take the weight off your hands. So if you're comfortable in child, come into child pose. And then what we're going to do from child pose, or if you're not in child, so Linda, if you're not in child, come onto a long hands and knees. If you're in child pose, reach your arms forwards on the floor, let your elbows come off the floor and plant your hands down. And then come back onto hands and knees. So what I'd like you to be in now on hands and knees is a long hands and knees position. So for cat, you're here, but now your hands are further forwards. And then what's it like to just start to, you're not going necessarily that far with this to start with, to start to rock your pelvis, that's it, good. So you're starting to bring your pelvis forwards towards face up dog. But we're sort of going quite easy with this because we're going to do some other face up dog versions in a moment. So perhaps just once or twice more, how does it feel to let the pelvis come forward? Okay, and then tuck your toes under. Walk your hands back in towards your knees. That's it, can you let your knees come off the floor? Can you come up onto the balls of your feet? Here, can you rock a little bit? Yeah, so we're here on the, we're, rather than kneeling, we're actually up on, that's it, we're on the, on the, up on our toes, on the balls of our feet, because from here, you're going to start to send your heels down and your sit bones up. So you come back into a forward bend. Oh, we all in the forward. Good. And in your forward bend, then touch the backs of your hands together. And you're going to roll up into standing, keeping the backs of your hands touched. That's very nice. So you bring your hands straight up the front of your body, arms straight up to the ceiling, breathe in, drop your shoulders. Exhale, take your arms in a big circle all the way down and around back into the prayer pose. And then we're going to go back down to the floor again. So let a breath come in. As you exhale, take your arms down and then up. Breathe in, drop your shoulders. As you exhale, down into your forward bend again. <sighs> Big exhalation. And then on into dog pose. So from your forward bend, walk your hands forwards again into dog pose. See how that feels. Don't worry if your heels come up. You can bend your knees, both knees, one knee at a time. And from dog pose, coming down onto your hands and knees. So this time, come back, actually no, that's fine, be on hands and knees. You're going to tuck your toes under. You're going to round your back to the ceiling and rock your hips back over your heels. Now, then walk your hands a little bit further forwards. So you're still rocked back, but you've walked your hands forwards. Let a breath come in. And then as you exhale, if, you haven't, if you're not sure what you're doing, you can just watch me. As you exhale, you're going to travel forwards, rounding your back to the ceiling. So you're looking at your pelvis as you come forwards towards face up dog. 
that's it very nice and so the last thing you do is then look forwards and let your pelvis hang and untuck your toes and then reverse that so go back rock back start to tuck your toes under round your back to the ceiling look back let a breath come in and then travel forwards again looking back with your back really rounded so you come into face up dog but the last thing you do is look forwards good and let your pelvis hang so try that one more time rocking back tuck your toes under round your back to the ceiling look back behind you let a breath come in and then travel forwards rounding your back to the ceiling and when you're in face up dog that's it that's when you let your pelvis go you look forwards and then this time rock back tuck your toes under but walk your hands in towards you. So come to here. So we're up on the balls of our feet. We could actually, what I'm doing at the moment, if you're wondering, is spreading my toes out because they're a bit jammed up against each other. A little bit of rocking here. Put my fingertips on the floor. And then from here, we're going into our forward bend. So sending the heels down, sending the sit bones up. <sighs> Let the head go. Touch the backs of your hands together, rolling up into standing, taking your arms straight up towards the ceiling. Breathe in. As you exhale, take your arms out in a big circle. Good. We're going to one more time go down onto hands and knees and do, do a bit of um, a slightly different way into our face up dog. So, hands in prayer pose. Let a breath come in. As you exhale, take your arms down and then up. Let the breath come in, drop your shoulders and then roll down into your forward bend. <sighs> let the head go, let the arms go and then walk your hands forwards into dog pose. That's it. So bend your knees to help you get your hands on the floor. Walk your hands forwards. You can go a little bit further, maybe shallower. I think that's it. So just come into a sort of dog pose that feels a good length for you. And then from your dog pose, come down onto hands and knees. And so again, this time, make sure your shoulders are over your wrists and your knees are under your hips. What I'd like you to do this time is to imagine you have a tail. So you could imagine you have a fish's tail and you're swishing your tail from side to side. Or you can imagine you're a dog and you have a dog's tail and you're wagging your tail. So can you, yeah, can you, that's it, very nice. Imagine you have a tail and you're wagging and you're swishing your tail from side to side. Good. And then we use this tail wagging movement to take us in and out or towards child pose and towards face up dog. So if we're going to go into face up dog, our hands probably need to be a little bit further forwards. So we can swish our tail side to side to go back into child. And we can swish our tail side to side to take us forwards into face up dog. So that's it. So this tail swishing can go take us back and it can take us forwards. So make sure when you come forwards, you end up with your hands under your shoulders, not too, we don't want your hands too close into you. So yeah, just up to you. A couple more times, forwards and back, trying to do the side to side, the sort of side to side swinging of the pelvis, taking us forwards and back. And maybe the next time you go back, um, Linda, it might be you want to lie into your bed, and the next time you go back, just give yourself a breath or two in child pose. Let your forehead and elbows rest on the floor. 
That's it. Just let your foot head rest down. Let your elbows rest down. Have a couple of quiet breaths in child pose. Let the breath come in, let the breath leave you. One last time, we're going to come up into standing through coming onto the balls of our feet. So you need to come back onto hands and knees. If you were in child pose, you might like to lengthen each leg out behind you in turn. And then one last time, hands and knees, tuck your toes under, walk your hands into your knees, let your knees come off the floor. You might spread your toes out at this point. And then we're just doing a bit of rocking. And then from here, we're sending the heels down and the sit bones up into our forward bend. We're touching the backs of the hands together. We're rolling into standing <sighs> and then we bring the arms back in front of us and let's just let's just shake shake out shake out arms and legs good just slowing the cat now this will be fun we're going to do this another mudra so i'm going to just come and show you so start with some I don't think any of you were here for the Friday garden yoga, so we did this then. So, this is a Baya Hidraya Mudra. You're going to cross your wrists with your right hand closer to you, okay? Put your right hand close to you. Then you're going to interlink the index fingers, the middle fingers, and the little fingers, but not the ring fingers. So then the ring finger comes to touch the thumb. Yeah. So are we completely knotted up at this point? <laughs> are we all right? That's it, Jan. Yeah. Okay. I think we should release that and do it again. And <laughs> it will feel easier. So shake your hands out. Okay. Try it again. Because so we're going to do this in tree pose in a moment. So um, this time you could um, take this straight into tree. So cross your wrists. So the right hand's closer to you got the backs of the hands touching, then, the, then you link index fingers, middle fingers, little fingers. So the ring finger then touches onto your thumb. Okay, now we're going to, it might be that you want to release your hands again. We're going to come into tree pose. Obviously, if you want to bring your foot right up onto your thigh using your hand, you're then going to have to come back into the mudra. Alternatively, you can think, okay, I'm going to do a little, a sort of a mini tree pose. Yeah, so we've got our hands in this position in front of us. Good. It might be that you're doing the added challenge of bringing your hands into the mudra once you've got into tree pose. So I'll just see how it feels to... <sighs> Settle here to drop the shoulders. And from here, if you do feel steady, the, the one I did on Friday, which I hadn't done before, was then bring the arms up over the head with the hands in this mudra. Good. And seeing how that feels. Very nice. Let the breath come in. Let the breath leave you. And then from here, what would it be like just to release your hands and bring your arms wide out to the sides? Good. All the way down. So you don't have to. At that point, you could. You could at that point from here bring your arms back down in front of your chest. I quite like to release my arms at that point, but that, you know, on side two, you can decide. So decide whether you're going to 
do the mudra first and then come into tree or come into the balance and then do your hands. So remember, you've crossed your wrists, backs of the hands interlink, index finger, middle finger, little fingers, touch the thumb, the index finger. So this, this mudra is um, um, a Baya Hidraya mudra, which is um, courageous heart mudra. And um, because we're sort of crossing the midline of our body, it's very, it's very centering. Good. So again, if you're feeling at all stead unsteady, having the hands at the breastbone is really helpful. But when and if you do feel steady, it's very nice in this one to bring the arms up over the head. And have a few breaths here. Good. And you could stay with the arms up or you could keep the hands in the mudra and bring the hands down in front of your chest. Or like I did last time, you could release your arms and then take your arms wide. So wide and Oh, come down, have a little shake out. And so we're going to do, let's just settle in standing for a moment. We're going to do one more balance with mudras in a moment. Let's just settle in standing, feel our feet on the floor, maybe close the eyes. Do a little bit of rocking your weight from side to side. That's it, rock your weight over your right leg, over your left. Do a little bit of rocking your weight forwards and back along the length of your footprints. So in a moment, we're going to come into these balances where we come onto the balls of our feet. So we're balancing, but on both feet, but we're letting the heels come off the ground. So obviously have your eyes open now and just do this a few times, bringing your weight forwards onto the balls of your feet and seeing how that feels. So we're going to do this. Let's just do it once here, taking our arms up, and then we're going to do it with a couple of mudras. So just from here, come onto the balls of your feet, and then float your arms up, keep the shoulders relaxed. See how that feels. Let the breath come in, let the breath go through. Good. Any noise, and then come back down. I'm just going to again show you close up. So we're going to start in this one with the thumbs and the index fingers touching by the sides of our body. We then bring the arms up out to the sides and then the arms up and we've still got the thumb and index finger touching. Then the bit you need to remember is from here. We'll bring the hands down in front of our chest. The right hand turns away from you. The left hand turns towards you and you touch the middle finger, the index finger and thumb of the right hand to the middle finger of the left hand. So this is this Dharma Chakra Mudra we've done sometimes, which is about the interconnection of our outer world and our inner world. And we bring our hands in front of our chest with that mudra. Okay, so we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll explain it to you as we go through, but um, just to give you a little heads up. So our starting point is here in standing, touching the thumb and index finger together in both hands. And then you're going to bring your weight forwards onto the balls of your feet. And then from here, we're going to see what's it like to take the arms out to the sides, turn the palms up. You've got your thumb and index finger touching in each hand. And then from here, you can let your arms come up towards the ceiling. You've got the thumb and index finger touching still. Good, let the shoulders be relaxed. And then from here, bring your hands down in front of your chest. So you're turning your right palm forwards and your left palm towards you. And you're touching the thumb and index finger of the right hand to the middle finger of the left hand. 
good. And you just see if you can stay on balancing here. So we're still balancing, hopefully, on the balls of our feet, heels off the ground. Good. Let's breath into coming up. And then come down and shake out. Good. And I think from there, just come into a forward bend. So feet hip width apart and parallel, rolling forwards, bending your knees as much as you like. Let your head go, let your arms go. Let your let your mind go. So let your mind sort of soften and relax after the focus of the balance is good. If your lower back needs some support, rest your elbows on your thighs. And whenever you've had enough, sink down into your heels. Rolling up into standing. Good. So come towards the back of your mat. We're going to make our way down into sort of a child pose variation. Then I'll, I'll just think about you in a moment. Now, the first thing we're going to do at the back of our mat is we're going to come back into that balance where we come up onto the balls of our feet. And we're just, our arms, we're not doing the mudra, we're just taking our arms up. So you feel very long, feel very long and tall at this point. And then let your heels come down. Let yourself roll down into a forward bend. And then from here, you're going to walk your hands forwards into dog pose. But you're going to go a bit further. You're going to make it a long dog so that you can then rock into plank pose. So you can come into this long, straight line of plank. And from plank pose, we're going to fold down into child pose. Actually, I have thought of a variation for you, Linda. So in child pose, we're doing a variation where your knees are a bit wider apart and you're going to bring your arms into this position. So Linda, if it's comfortable for you, you could do it as one of those puppy poses. I don't know if this is better or worse for the knee to be up like this. So you could do it like that. You just don't want to stay there too long. So if you're if you're comfortable in child pose, you're folding back. Your knees are wide. You're bringing your elbows forwards, and your hands are coming up into the air. And we just that's it. So if you're in child pose, think about your elbows coming in towards each other and away from you. So what we're trying to do in this child pose is flatten out our upper backs, yeah, where we can be quite stiff and rounded. And also, if you're trying to think about, think about sending your elbows forwards on the mat, away from your knees, so that we're opening out in the underarms. And yes, Linda, don't stay there too long. You might need to come and round up in cat pose. Um, the rounded cat, something out of water. So cat and Otto thinks it's time to get up. So <laughs> you're gonna be really thrilled with the next thing we have. I, <laughs> I thought we would do a little bit of dog pose, Otto, elbow dog, um, which yeah, really delightful. So watch out of the way. So the first variation you're going to do is to rest your forearms on the ground with your palms facing up. So if I was to turn around this way, I've got my, my arms on the floor like this, palms facing up. And you're going to see how it feels to come into your dog pose on your elbows like this. It will feel absolutely delightful, I'm sure. So you don't need to come up very long. Come up, hands facing the ceiling. How does it feel? Oh, this dog pose, your knees might be quite bent. That's it. So it's quite good in this elbow dog to bend your knees quite a bit so your pelvis goes back. That's it, Maria. Um, <laughs> come down. Don't stay there long. We're going to do three different variations. When you come down, either be here or here and just swing your arms a little bit. Yeah. 
So in one of these positions, just give your arms a swing. Now, the next one will be even worse. You're, this, you're going to do the same thing with your arms, but this time your palms are going to go down on the floor. And you could have your hands coming in towards each other a bit. Yeah, you don't want to take your elbows really wide, otherwise your head will hit the floor. So you, you want your head to hang. So palms down this time. How does it feel? If I come up into my elbow dog here, I keep my knees quite bent. Because we're still trying to send our bottoms back. And I, I really appreciate this is not pleasant in the shoulders. So Maria, try bend, I just, I've got a very good view of you. Try bending your knees and sending your pelvis back a bit more. Oh, that's it. Good, 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 good. Very nice. Probably applies to everyone as well. Sheila, try, that's it. Try sort of bending your knee. You might have your feet slightly too far away from your elbows, Sheila. So, and you, yeah, that's it. Because you look to me like your head's almost on the floor. Is it? Where's your head on the floor? Yeah, don't want your head on the floor, okay? <laughs> if your head is touching the floor, your elbows might be too wide apart. Last one, try, try this last um, elbow dog. You're going to have your hands in this mudra where you're touching the pads of the fingers and the thumbs. And then you're going to rest your arms on the floor in that position. This is quite good because we sometimes feel to stay a bit more relaxed in the shoulders when we do this. And yes, no heads on the floor, please. The head is hanging like it does in dog pose. <sighs> See how it feels in that, that final one. I can't say it would be, yes, that's better. So really let your head go, Sheila. That's it, beautiful, well done, well done. Yes, well done, everyone, brilliant. And then when you come out of that, <laughs> you're just gonna do a normal dog pose and see how lovely and easy that feels. So normal dog pose, planting your hands on the floor, tucking your toes under, exhaling. <sighs> Doesn't that feel nice? <laughs> Hopefully, feel nice after your elbow dog, good. Yes, and again, bend your knees as much as you like in your dog pose. Aditi, that looks really good, well done in your shoulders. Maybe the elbow dog <laughs> has helped to undo something there. Brilliant. And from dog pose, just come down and give yourself a couple of quiet breaths, either in child pose or kneeling or lying on your belly. So just let yourself settle quietly, child pose, kneeling or lying on your belly. We just need, when we've done something that's a little intense, like elbow dog or in anything, we just need to give ourselves, our bodies, our minds, our nervous system, time to settle and absorb what we've just done. So for two or three more cycles of breath, feel the breath come in, feel the breath leave you. Feel the weight of your body settled on the ground in whatever position you've chosen. We're going to now be doing a little bit of um say a little bit of rolling back which will take us into some lying down so you're going to come to a lot of you know what this means so i say rolling back it obviously eventually becomes into sort of abdominal so come to sit towards the front of your mat in this sort of position so your knees are bent your feet are not really close up towards you what we're thinking now so you could make your spine really straight but actually what we're doing here is we're trying to let our spine round. So the first thing you're doing is sliding your hands from your feet to your knees and you're looking down. 
down at the floor, down at your belly. And you're thinking that your back is nice and round. Yeah. We'll hop back to round out. And just repeat this a few times. Slide your hands from your feet to your knees, looking down, letting your back be round. And then from here, as we go back, we then let our feet come up. And then we look forwards to come up again. So this is why it's really important to, <laughs> to round, because if we want to be able to roll, we need to have a round back. And look forwards. Okay. So rolling back, pick your feet up, look forwards, come back. Just keep repeating this, going down, look forwards, come up again. So roll back, look forwards and come back up. So what we're trying to in effect is to sort of come and balance on the sort of middle part of our back. So we can roll back and it might be that we try to lengthen our legs. And then we bend our knees and come back up again. Okay, so this is where the our abdominals obviously get involved. So we're rolling down. We're trying to balance in the middle of your back and on. Um, and the idea in this one is the shoulders and the heels are at the same height. We'll, we'll try that once or twice more. So roll back, roll back. Look at your belly. Let your feet pick up. So I have to stop speaking. <laughs> Do it once more, maybe, and then after this one, you're going to lie down onto your backs, okay? So rolling back, rolling back. Your feet come up, good. And then. Yes, <laughs> so I always like that when I finally lie down there, this sort of big surge of breath <laughs> comes in, maybe. So lie down, good. However is comfortable and feel your breath. So maybe take your hands onto the front of your body. So yeah, lie down onto your back. Take your hands onto the front of your body. And so what's really nice after that last one is to feel how your belly now moves as you breathe. Because yeah, the belly can be relaxed now. So let your hands come onto your belly. So maybe for two or three more cycles of breath. See if you can feel the belly rising as you breathe in, the belly softening back as you exhale. Yes, and I can see a few of you doing some little movements here, which is a really good idea. So you could do a bit of rolling your head to the right and to the left. And some of you have got your knees bent and your feet standing on the floor and you're tilting your knees to the right and to the left. And that's also really nice. Yes, yeah, so if you haven't, yes, if your legs are long, you might like to bend your knees and stand your feet on the floor and tilt your knees to the right and to the left. Good. That's nice. And from tilting your knees to the right and to the left, if, you, if you're not doing that, that's absolutely fine. But if you are, then just settle in the centre. So I'd like you all now to organise yourself. So your knees are bent, your feet are standing on the floor. And you're going to start to tilt your pelvis up and down on the floor. Yes, yeah, so I think if you lie down and just... Um, feel this. So what I'd like you to do with your knees bent, your feet standing on the floor, is tipping your pelvis towards your head and away from your head. So you're rocking your pelvis up and down. So when you tip your pelvis towards your head, your lower back flattens out. 
When you tip your pelvis away from your head, your lower back arches. And from tipping your pelvis like this, you're going to move on into bridge pose. You're going to let your lower back flatten out. Let the whole of your pelvis come off the floor and some of your spine. And you're going to roll up and down two or three times into bridge pose. So sinking down into your feet, that's good. Letting the pelvis come away from the floor and some of your spine. And as you place your spine back onto the floor, trying to place it down vertebrae by vertebrae, particularly in the lower back. So this is opportunity, particularly when we come down out of bridge pose, to try and create a bit of space in the lower back by placing the pelvis down vertebrae by vertebrae. Um, Nigel, I think your feet could be slightly wider apart. Um, good. Okay, when, you, when your pelvis next comes back to the floor, just leave it there. We're going to do variations so you're going to keep your right knee bent and your length and your left leg out on the floor so most of you know this one um, what you're going to do now is press into your right foot let the right side of the pelvis come off the floor and your pelvis rolls towards the left so you want to stay heavy in the left side shallow so it's like a sort of half bridge pose but the left side of your pelvis doesn't lift that's good and then come back down again with the pelvis on the right, good. So repeat this a few times, pressing into your right foot. Think about your right knee moving forwards over your foot rather than over to the left. So the pelvis will tilt to the left, but your right knee goes forwards. So you want to stay sort of heavy in the left side of your body and in your left leg and the right side of the pelvis comes off the floor, your pelvis tilts to the left. Good. Now, you're going to add a further variation into this. So it's easier to do this when your pelvis is off the floor on the right side. You're going to bring your right hand to stand on the floor near to your head. So if you're not sure, you might just want to come over and look at me. So your right, pel your right side of your pelvis is off the floor. You Bend your right elbow and you bring your right hand to stand on the floor next to your head with your fingers pointing towards your toes. And then we're trying to press into the hand and the foot. Yeah. So I can have a little look at you. So this is again coming back to good. It's asking quite a lot of opening. So if you're pressing good, so let, very nice. Let your head roll to the left. Well done. So you're pressing into the right foot and the right hand. And there's this big feeling of opening down through the right side of your body. Good. Good. That's nice. And if you press down into that right hand, the back of the right shoulder comes away from the floor or suddenly lightens its contact with the ground. That's what we're trying to feel good. Very nice, very nice. And you roll towards the left side of your body. So you could repeat that once or twice more and then we'll, we'll do all of this on the other side. So you can just um, release everything for a moment. Yeah, release everything for a moment, lie long or fold your knees into your chest and then we'll do everything on side two.
So it's quite a strong movement for the wrist when you bring your, your hand onto the floor like that, yeah. Yes, so when you're ready, when you've folded in or you've lengthened out, then organize yourself so your left knee is bent, your left foot is standing on the floor, your right leg is long. Good. First of all, just have your arms on the floor beside you. Okay, so we'll get terribly excited about putting your hand on the floor. So a few times, pressing down into your left foot, letting the left side of the pelvis come away from the floor, letting your pelvis roll towards the right. Good. So just do that a few times. Just get that um, feeling of pressing into your left foot. And as we do so, there's that sort of lovely feeling down through the left side of the body. As we press into the left foot, the left side of the pelvis lifts. It starts to open us out through the ribs in the left side of the body. And then as I can see, some of you are raring to go. When your pelvis is off the floor on the left side, that's when it's easier to bring your hand into position. So you're bending your, right, your left elbow bending your left wrist, your left hand comes to stand on the floor next to your head with your fingers pointing towards your toes. And then you're trying to press into the hand and the foot. And as you press into that hand and foot, you roll towards the right side of your body. Let your head roll to the right. It will help if you let your head respond. That's it. Keep thinking about that, um, that left knee going forwards. So the left knee is going forwards over the footprint rather than over to the right. Yeah, there is a variation where we take the knee over to the right, but we're not doing that right now. So to get that feeling of being really long through the left side of your body, your knee needs to move forwards over the footprint. That's it. Good. And again, whenever you've had enough, just undo. Release. Good. Very nice. Release your arm. Release your leg. Lengthen both legs. You could fold both knees into your chest. Yeah, so it might be, what, what might be quite nice to do now is to, yeah, as most of you are doing, is to have your knees folded into your chest. You might like to take your legs up to the ceiling, give them a little bit of a shake out. And then we'll just bring the feet back down onto the floor and a little bit of letting your knees tilt to the right and to the left. So knees bent, feet standing on the floor, letting your knees tilt to the right and to the left. Don't have your feet too close into your bottom for this one because you want to feel that the feet can just yeah stay standing on the floor, that's it good. And it might be that you want to take your feet a little bit wider so that you can then let your knees come down onto the floor and stay there for a couple of breaths. So like we did towards the beginning of class, if you have your feet as wide as your mat, the narrow edge of your mat, you could let your knees come down towards the floor. And again, if you have a cushion to hand and you want to slide it under one knee, you can do. I was just having a look, Sheila, and seeing that actually it looks looks a bit easier. Good. Yeah, so now if you want to, let the knees come all the way down to one side and just leave them there for a couple of breaths and do the same thing on the other side. So we're going to finish with a little bit of 
breathing. I was going to suggest you do it lying down, but you could actually sit up to do the breathing. It's going to, yeah, I'd, I'd sort of decide what you'd prefer. So if you're going to sit up, have your, have your back maybe against the wall. See, I'm sitting on the cushion, as I sit cross-legged on the cushion. So yeah, just decide whether you want to sit up or lie down to do this last little bit of breathing. And if you sit up, you could always lie down right at the end. And if you are sitting up, you might like your back against the wall or a sofa or a bed, something to make it a bit easier to help you sit. Good. And if you have chosen to sit, then just maybe take a little bit of time to do a little bit of circling or swaying or rocking to help you settle down. And if you're lying, you can have your knees bent or your legs long, whatever you prefer. Sheila, it could be quite nice to have your legs long, but with the cushion behind the back of your knees, possibly if it's big enough, it looks quite big. So, so we're going to do this breathing where basically, and we have, most of you have done this with me before, we basically have a cycle of breath. We breathe in, we breathe out as we touch each finger in turn. Sorry, there's just someone at the door. Sorry about that. Um, so I will talk you through it. We're just touching our fingers for a cycle of breath. We will start with the right hand. We then move on to the left hand. And it's just a way of helping us to stay with our focus on our breathing. So turn your right hand so the palm is up. And you're going to start by touching your thumb onto your little finger. And you're going to let a breath come in and let a breath leave. And then you move your thumb onto the ring finger and you let a breath come in, you let a breath leave. And then the thumb touches the middle finger and you let a breath come in, you let a breath leave. And then the thumb touches the index finger. Let a breath come in, let a breath leave. And then in your own time, go back down through the fingers. So back to the middle finger, letting a breath come in, letting a breath leave. Back through the ring finger, Back to the little finger. And then just turn your right hand palms down, have a couple of quiet breaths. And then in a moment, we'll move on to doing the same thing on the left hand. You can turn the left palm upwards and touch your thumb to your little finger. Let a breath come in, let a breath leave. Move your thumb to your ring finger, let a breath come in. Let a breath leave. Touch your thumb to your middle finger. Let a breath come in. Let a breath leave. Touch your thumb to your index finger. Let a breath come in. 
let a breath lead. And then back down through the fingers in your own time, touching the thumb to the middle finger, then the ring finger, then the little finger. And a cycle of breath on each, letting a breath come in, letting a breath leave. Whenever you finish, turn that hand so the palm is facing back down once more. Come back to feeling your breath moving through you. If you are sitting and you feel you would like to briefly lie down, you can do. And just wherever you are in sitting or lying, just let your body settle, particularly if you're sitting, can you let your shoulders drop? <sighs> and just feel the ground beneath you, you're feeling the air on your skin. Be aware of sounds around. So those of you who were here for garden yoga last week, we were very aware of the sounds and on Friday, very aware of the wind. But when we're lying or sitting quietly, there's lots in both our inner and outer world that we can be aware of. Aware of, but also let go of. So in a moment, I'm going to ring the singing bowl three times and I'll be the time to do fold forwards if you're sitting or start to think about moving if you're lying. Or if you're sitting, you might want to fold forwards for a moment. If you're lying, just take your time. And thank you, um, everyone, for my son, all your lovely presence. If you want to speak, you can unmute yourself. I don't know if I can unmute anyone. I wonder I've unmuted you. Yeah. Gina, I've unmuted you. Thanks, Kara. Thank you, everyone, very much. Thank you so very much. There's not going to be a class. I'm not teaching next week. I'll email out anyway. So there's no, yeah, I'm not, I'm taking the first week of September off. And then second week of September, we'll start again with a hybrid class. So there will be three places that people would like to come in my house. And I will book them in and we'll, we'll and then there'll also be Zoom at the same time. So we'll see how that goes. Entering a new a new stage. <laughs> so yes. yeah, have a lovely so week off then, Ma um, Cara. Thank you. Have fun. Yes. yes. And stay with a friend, an old friend. So that would be nice. Mm, lovely. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.